Before I begin my talk, I would like to invite you to take a few seconds to remember a shared accessible space where you felt included. Take a moment to recall what kind of space it was, what kind of conversation did you have, what that experience meant for you, and how you felt. I'll give you about 20 seconds and you can actually share with me in the chat um, some of your thoughts. Uh, what those spaces were and how it felt. If you've heard me speak before, I've given this talk a few times and I wanted to keep true to what I know uh, while also contextualizing that to open access. Uh, so I will go through some of these concepts in the beginning and do really touch on uh, the topics that you all are here for. The places that are truly shared, accessible and inclusive provide systems and processes for collaboration. Those shared spaces allow us to listen, participate, exchange ideas, and be part of building positive experiences for one another in that space. Through collaborations, these shared systems remain accessible and provide benefits to all members of a community. Places that are not designed for collaboration can feel transactional, one-sided, and in fact, disempowering where benefits are not shared with the community. With that notion of shared space, I want to discuss the access to commons. Commons comes from the common lands or resources belonging to or affecting the whole of a community. For centuries, land over the world were managed and accessed by lo local communities for shared benefits. In India, commons make up more than a third of India's total land area. For rural and indigenous population, these lands provide food, water, firewood, fodder, while helping recharge land, groundwater, and maintenance of ecological balance. After India's independence, as the population grew and demand for land rose, rights to many common lands were taken away by the government and given to private industrial development projects, including roads, mines, urbanization effort, mo most of which were largely extractive and disrespectful of local needs. The argument stemmed from the colonial mentality that villagers and indigenous cultures are inherently inferior and hence not capable of managing their lands or governing their own resources. Modern laws through privatization and commercial means disregard local knowledge, even though for centuries local indigenous population have had strong arrangement for managing natural resources sustainably. This picture is by the Foundation of Ecological Security. They work with local communities in India to align modern laws and technology with local knowledge, needs, and ways of working. Their goals are to promote livelihoods that are ecologically sound, socially just, and economically rewarding. They work with local community to secure community land rights, decentralized information and knowledge, such as about management, local governance plans, access to resources, and finance. Through collective effort, many rural communities have managed to reclaim their rights to commons while restoring community resources for common access. In a way that they use it, that addresses their local need. It aims to build equality in their society, especially among different actors of that commons. This particular organization is not the only one, but this is an example for the roles for advocacy and intervention in preserving justice, equity, and rights of community. In the UK, common lands are privately owned land with rights to access. First mentioned in law in Magna Carta in 1215, when nearly half of the land in Britain was common land, now it accounts for less than 10%. There are about 8,000 registered common lands in England alone, including national parks and coastal line that remain important for wildlife, landscape, or archaeological interest, while being available for public access. In the 16th century, enclosure, which was privatization of common lands, led to steep decline in land available for public access. This was to gain benefit for landowners who acquired land often by force or on the basis of class system. In 1865, Open Spaces Society was formed that rescued forests around London and registered several common lands. Despite the diverse legal and historical basis, only in late 19th century, many laws were formally written with the National Register of Common Land and recorded land ownership and rights of people to access and manage them. 
in the forefront of this movement were ramblers who wanted to retain the rights to walk in the countryside. In the 19th century, six groups from all over the UK came together to form National Council of Rambler Federation, which was instrumental in securing national parks and access to countryside. It led to creation of National Park and Trails. In 2000, which was way after all of these work was happening, the Ram Ramblers Federation also led to the passing of Rights of Way Act, which grants freedom to roam between commons. If you remember the previous slide, this one is all the land that are commons, but they also provided access between the commons. This is another example of advocacy and intervention in preserving rights of communities to participatory effort. Participatory process to man manage common for shared benefit is called commoning. Although commoning stems from traditional commons in rural setting, it extends in urban spaces such, such as city parks and beyond, like physical, digital, and economic infrastructure of communities. The reason to highlight advocacy and intervention in commons is to make a point that there is no commons without commoning. Common always requires a community, people who are or want to access the common, and they have governance, a set of rules or structure uh, that involves community to care for both the resources as well as other people in the community. Eleanor Ostrom, a scholar and author of Governing the Commons, extensively researched communities and provided a set of principles for how commons can be governed equitably and sustainably. Her work demonstrated that ordinary people all around the world at the local level can often manage their resources better than the government or private companies. They are closer to the problem, they work in shared interest, and have local knowledge of how to care for their resources in the long term. He challenged and debunked tragedy of commons, which was often used to justify privatization, um, and often said that closed access and denying open participation is effective methods to prevent resources from being ruined or depleted. She transferred her knowledge of commons from land access to knowledge access, describing that as knowledge commons. Information, data, and content that is collectively owned and managed by a community of users without depleting their quality or quantity. Her work has since been used in understanding and decolonizing practices used both in local and modern setting, as well as designing digital commons via online research communities and open science. In the core of common and commoning is the will to achieve equity, be it land access, social equity, knowledge commons, or designing digital spaces for equi equitable participation. Principle of Commons urges all of us to question and explore who gets to be part of the knowledge production and access system. To whom does knowledge belong? Who has the privilege to set the direction of knowledge production and circulation? Who gets to participate in this system? Who holds the agency and is part of decision making? In what ways can we increase agency of more people over this system of knowledge production, circulation, as well as benefits? Using this theory, digital commons is described as collective creation and ownership of knowledge, data, information, culture, or publication within online communities. It involves open data, open access, open source, and other form of open practices. Like other physical Resources, digital commons are specifically the kind of commons that can never deplete by sharing. And in fact, not sharing them affects some communities over others. Hence, creating and maintaining digital commons like other commons require intervention, a set of governance, a rule, and understanding that we all can apply in our work. This concept is not new to most of you. Some example of digital commons include creative commons, the, the license and infrastructure for sharing resources. We have also used Wikimedia Commons in LARF our work, uh, which is a repository for free to use media files. Participatory grant making, making is another form of commons where decision making power is shifted from funders to communities that are closer to the problem. Another form of commons is called digital good that is made available to others due to devastating impact of pandemic UNESCO's ethics commission called for global vaccine equity and mobilized over 122 countries to sign declaration to promote open science, 
open access, and make a joint appeal to reinforce international cooperation that could lift patent for vaccine equity. Digital Public Good Alliance is another example that lists digital commons such as software, data, resources, and initiatives that are aligned with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Finally, Open Hardware Project provides a unique example that combines software, design, hardware, and other resources to recycle, for instance, in this case, plastic and reduce environmental impact. We've learned a lot from all of these commons, and there are multiple of them that I have not mentioned. So in a way, commoning is practice of openness. We already know it through our work or the work of our colleagues, as well as through research communities and physical and digital spaces that we participate in. Open science is just a common language that validates what we already value, and it provides a set of approaches even when some may just consider it uh, marginal or inconsequential. Open science movement has allowed us to bring diverse voices, represent situated knowledge and realities from physical spaces, and help build equitable collaborative research through open access. In fact, open here is equitable access. This has been particularly important to ensure participation of members from underrepresented and marginalized groups in participatory decision making for the collective benefits. Open science communities use framework for collaboration, peer production, and sustainability of research objects that are beneficial for all. Research object could mean anything st starting from data to paper to software or anything that we produce tangibly or intangibly. The aim is to ensure active participation in the development and decision-making process of the research we use. This means that diverse contributors are given opportunity to come into the project with different perspectives, participate in the development process, and integrate their combined values in the product by design. So open science is an umbrella term. Uh, we use it to talk about multiple concepts and streams of practices, including software, data, publication, hardware, education, and name whatever else that you care about. Open science communities are developed around one or combination of these streams where each community builds and cares for resources that are meaningful for them based on their context. UNESCO regards science as a human right, the greatest collective endeavor and an enterprise that has significant value as a common good. In 2017, UNESCO aimed to turn the right to open science into duty to be exercised by all stakeholders of research, including researchers themselves, institutions, educators, publishers, employers, libraries, policymakers, all of these facilitated by member states. Participants in science includes everyone, including government and public, as beneficiaries and contributors. This week, we are having a conversation about open access, specifically around the theme of community over commercialization. Rather than assuming that open to all means, open access is supposed to be beneficial to all. The approaches should be working towards democratizing access to systems of knowledge. But we should not forget that system of knowledge require funding, infrastructure, education and support at individual, institutional, geographical and political level that each diverse stakeholder would need to address multiple challenges that affect them. Therefore, please bear with me that, that I continue to talk about open science and encompass open access in that, uh, alongside other practices that we apply throughout the life cycle to create outputs and resources for open access. I am not rejecting the point of talking about open access. I just personally do not feel I'm, I am the right person to only talk about open access where I work with community across different level of openness. When aiming for diverse participants, it would be ideal if everyone knows how to apply good practice. But open science or knowledge access means many things to many people, and the best practices can differ based on where you are. Although we can draw from our lived experience at grassroots level, uh, where we work within the community, Top-down recommendation, policies, advocacy, and interventions are equally crucial to integrate good practices across academic, industry, government, or other sectors that we work in. Furthermore, fortunately, skills for open science are not widely or effectively taught. Researchers often struggle to share their data, code, methods openly that limit others to investigate different components required to reproduce the original work. 
practicing open and reproducible research is a shared responsibility. Everyone should be supported to understand how they can apply these practices in their work at different stages of research, as well as access information that is available to them. This is where the Turing Way comes in picture. The Turing Way is an open science, open collaboration, and community-driven handbook to data science. We involve and support a diverse community in making research reproducible, ethical, open, and inclusive for everyone. To make our work truly beneficial and comprehensible for as many people as possible, we want to collaborate with them across diverse skills, background, lived experience, and domain knowledge. Like the digital common, the Turing Way is a book, a public resource open for access. It's an open source community that supports project through open source infrastructure. We value and welcome openness of diversity of knowledge that reflect local reality and needs of researchers. And we foster a community that take that drives advocacy and intervention across many areas of research to make research collaborative, equitable, and accessible across different knowledge systems. It is a part of the Allen Turing Institute, which is a national institute for data science and artificial intelligence in the UK. We apply uh, artificial intelligence and data science to address different um, challenges across health. Um, economic, transportation, ethical algorithm, digital humanities, and so on. The Turing Way offers a cross-cutting view on all data practices, regardless of the domain. This means that we ensure that data practices are discussed and described in a way that they can be adopted across academia, government industries, dealing with wide variety of challenge and social considerations. The Turing Way started as a book on reproducibility by Kirsty. Um, we wanted to provide central information that is accessible for anyone uh, depending on where they are in their research. We wanted to build a sense of shared responsibility for openness and reproducibility. Therefore, rather than just talking about technicality of openness, we also wanted to think about good collaboration, good communication, research ethics as a fundamental scientific method. In the Turing way, we define reproducibility as same analysis applied to same data should give the same result. There are other concepts around reproducibility like replicability. When the same analysis is applied to different data or experiment in different condition, and then there are robustness and generalizability as well. However, when we talk about computational reproducibility, we want to maintain same data, same analysis as the minimum criteria to ensure quality. The Turing Way project started with contributors who documented best practices and guidance in chapters describing various concepts that can ensure reproducibility uh, in data. These chapters included topics such as open research, version control, licensing, data management, code quality, testing, and so on. But the more contributors wrote, the more they realized that there are other aspects of uh, good research practices that needed to be taught in order to make these practices applicable. This leads to the first insight from participating in the project. And so I started as a participant in May 2019. By September 2019, I was committee manager of the project. And in 2021, I became a co-lead for the project. We have seen the evolution of the project. Um, and there are a lot of experiences that I have kind of retained in me while also ensuring that all of these are shared across the book. So the first point here that I want to make is that research includes the way we communicate our work as well as design our project, uh, collaborate with others, as well as consider ethics and integrity of our work, which is something that we want to, to promote through the book. And therefore, rather than having just one uh, guide on reproducibility, we expanded the project into five different guides. Academia places a huge emphasis on outcome, but open science practices are integral throughout the research process to achieve those outcomes. It's worth remembering that openness does not work in a vacuum. It requires a combined approach that takes reproducibility, collaboration, inclusion at all stages of research life cycle. You can do open, unethical research or collaborative and ethical closed research, but putting it all together takes skill, mentorship, and understanding. These are together considered as foundational skill set in the Turing way, and they are skills we look to develop in. Uh, with the contributors and users of the Turing Way. 
So the guides that we are building are, um, I briefly showed you about reproducibility, but we have a guide on project design, communication, collaboration, ethical research, and all the work that we do in building this project and the community within the community handbook. Percy and I co-lead this project with our team member, Anne Lee Steele as the community manager and Alexandra uh, Alvarez as our project manager. Um, the project is in its fifth year and we provide five open access guides and a community handbook, as you saw, and over 300 chapters and 450 contributors and more, um, as well as the communities involved in numerous training and community resources. So although these are the four faces that I'm showing, I want to acknowledge that these are just enablers of the work from the community. And thanks really goes to our, our community members, um, our collaborators uh, who have been working with us from all around the world. They develop chapters on uh, data reporting approaches, forms of collaboration, advocacy, knowledge access, and other topics that they care about, that they have learned or they are teaching in their own community. And we welcome all kinds of contribution around case studies, lived experience as well. You don't need to know how to code in order to contribute. That's the beauty of the Turing way. Everyone has a skill that is important for someone else, and we believe that is worth sharing. But as anyone who has ever bookmarked a paper, uh, they were very definitely going to read that later. We recognize that available written resources are just the start. For the Turing Way, the, the act of coming together, making collective decision, and collaborating on the work is as important, and it's an important part of com uh, commenting as the writing itself. So far, I've talked a lot about the book, but uh, it is a community where people come together to collaboratively write chapters, build and maintain resources, share their skills and ideas around best practices in data science and research. It is an open source project built on open source infrastructure and maintained using open source principle. And finally, it's built on the culture of collaboration, which is the process and backbone of our project. For us, all of this together is what make up the digital commons. Note on the name. Uh, this project is for community. It always belongs to the community. This is not a Turing project, although there is a great support from the Institute, including uh, the people who are working in this full time. This is always a work in progress. We understand that the data science is evolving and hence all the practices that we are talking about today needs to evolve as the world changes. Also, we are creating community resources for community. It's about the way, the journey and not sets of rules. It is about people who want to use it in their own communities itself. So what does a resource for global data science community look like? Some questions that we want to ask is how can we apply principles of commons in building a global resource? How can we build a global public good for open access? And how do we recognize diversity of roles, cultures, languages, and lived experiences? The reason we need all of these aspects to acknowledge that open by default is not inclusive or accessible or community led. It needs intentional design combined with action. The key to intentional community building is to involve diverse contributors as leaders, as decision makers, who are given opportunity to come into the project, participate in the process, build something that is truly relatable, useful, and beneficial for them. Building a community of over 400 contributors, uh, thousands of users every month, it takes time and effort and consideration. And we are really proud of the infrastructure that we have built to encourage people to get involved with the project from its public hosting GitHub to peer contribution guideline to good first issue, to training sessions, to book dash events where people come together to build new ideas, um, to automation of welcome bot when people join, they are uh, greeted through a bot, and our collaboration cafe where anyone can join and work with us. In the Turing way, we provide more than just README because onboarding to a project takes more than just one document or one session. This intentional approach to community building has paid off with our community growing over the last five years um, with multiple contributors, over 5,000 monthly users. We have a core community of over 25 people who come together to make decisions around different aspects of the project. 
And there are a lot of projects that are building on the Turing way in different directions. These are the metrics for all the images that I have used. It is also available for be used um, openly. We have seen our project and community grow in the last five years, and we currently host over 300 chapters across these guides. In order to ensure that our community members are able to participate irrespective of pre their previous experience, of working in open access or data science community, we provide guidance, template, training, and one-on-one -on -one pathways for them to get involved. We also maintain a social media presence to communicate about the project uh, so we can reach to as many people as possible and bring new voices in. For a community that started at a grassroots level, we are really grateful to have these members working with us. Building on the top of our community, uh, comes my next insight. In today's interconnected world, building digital common is truly equitable manner is a global effort. One that's not limited by language, or as you'll see in the next slide, by geography. The project is built and shared uh, on GitHub. As we have recently moved to our own organization as the project is becoming bigger and more complicated. On the right, you see the map of our monthly users location from um, all around the world except for some tiny parts. Uh, we have over 5,000 visitors monthly. Our contributors come from around uh, different parts with different language, bring different skills and challenges. Um, and we need to acknowledge that in 2023, we need to disregard and discard the notion of English, English language um, as the only way to promote open research practices. So as mentioned, it's an we use a lot of open source infrastructure and we want to openly exemplify that it is important to use existing infrastructure and provide support where we can. So we use at the bottom our Git, Jupyter book, Binder, different project bots. We use Netlify to host our book. Uh, we publish everything that we do on Zenodo, including the book is released uh, at least once a year. Um, and then, of course, we want to be also available to public in a way where they are. So uh, I recognize that GitHub isn't itself open, but that's where most of our community members are. The diversity of community has led to internationalization of projects through translation and localization. We have groups of contributors who are translating the book in the language that is important for them to engage with their community. We currently have languages uh, around Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, Chinese, Turkish. Um, and there are different people who are involved in leading this. So specifically, Batul al Marzuk, Melissa Black, and Andrea Sanchez Tapia are translation and localization leads. They have set up infrastructure and they also run weekly meeting to onboard new people. This acknowledgement of capacity of truly global participation stretches beyond writing in the Turing way. Everyone has other expertise which cannot just contribute to the writing chapters which is something that we also want to acknowledge. So specifically in the Turing way, we use a bot, uh, all contributors bot that is openly available. Anybody can install that on their GitHub to give recognition in a way uh, that, that goes beyond publishing code or writing something in the GitHub itself. Part of maintaining this digital common community includes recognizing different efforts that community members put beyond the traditional credit system. The Turing Way employs a decentralized process to avoid individual authorship in favor of establishing shared ownership and agency in the project. We ensure that all contributors are fairly acknowledged, especially when their roles involve hidden labor in research, and also recognizing that hidden work are often undertaken by people from marginalized community in research and tech spaces, such as uh, I showed for translation. People who are translating the book are the people who are deprived from not having access to the book or their community don't have access to information in the language. And therefore they take on additional labor to translate them. The Turing Way book is attributed to the Turing Way community with each contributor listed as author rather than the project leads. All our contributors can record their contribution also by writing specifically about what they have done so they can promote that to advance their career. Some people may want to just come into the project to build new skills, such as how to work it openly, how to apply version control, or how to build community. They can choose what they want to be involved in, and uh, the community manager and all the community leaders are there to support them in their interest. 
we also have defined different pathways uh, beyond going beyond writing chapters. We invite and engage people across different perspectives. We uh, ensure that we connect people from different parts of the world who are working on similar ideas. We run a lot of engagement activities. We constantly think about equitable participation and revamp it every time that we learn something new. And we want to acknowledge openly for all the work that people have done. We really want to think about what co-creation in the modern world looks like. There are many things that I would not talk about. I just don't have time for it. But I would love for you to come and join us and, and discuss if your community is working on similar topic or separate. So you've already heard about localization, localization and translation. Uh, we have a lot of training and outreach activities by volunteers and experts from the community. We have recently um, an accessibility working group where Liz Hare, Alexandra, and Laurel from Metadocencia are working on to write specifically community accessibility as well as technical accessibility. We also collaborate, collaborate with Environmental Data Science Book led by Alejandro Coca and Anne Fuyo uh, in order to replicate some of our practices in the context of environmental sustainability. We have a group of people who are constantly talking about research infrastructure roles. How do we go beyond traditional research roles so more people can be acknowledged for their work? How can we how can we reject the traditional way of acknowledging as the primary way of acknowledging? Um, we have infrastructure maintainers. So of course, we are working with fragile infrastructure, which are open source. They're not always funded, and therefore there are people who are giving us a lot of their time and care in maintaining that. We also recently launched a practitioner's hub because we are working with a lot of organizations and these organizations need systemic change. They want to understand how can I bring a policy in my institute to get more people to work in open? How can I amplify working with the Turing way as a way to work in the public commons? And of course, the community events. The idea of all of these distributed work is to go from just informing as a book um, as in like it's an open access, anybody can read it and learn about it, but that's not the idea. We want to make sure that we are moving towards collaboration and empowering people to work with us and own this project as their own. So as I mentioned, there is the community handbook. It's not complete, but uh, we are making sure that all the things that we are doing is also written for anybody to reuse it and replicate the project that we have built into their own communities. With this recognition of multiple different ways that people participate in this and contribute to the research and um, apply open access principles, we need to re-examine what it means to be researchers today. The way we do research is constantly changing. Nowadays, the idea that one person can, as a researcher, simultaneously write the grant and present work and engage with public and mentor other run a team and an event and engage with industry and write policy and analyze data and visualize everything. There's a lot that I can't mention here. It's just not possible. People cannot work alone. People cannot work with one system of knowledge. There are many things that we are working on and they need to coexist. There is, we need to have people working together in system that is not just accessible to them, to read, but actually gain benefit equally and bring that benefit back to their communities. Doing a quick time check, we have, I'm going to try to wrap it up in two minutes. I um, want to mention the, that we have a group of people and some of the slides that I've shown is by Ariel Bennett, who I worked with recently to present this talk. And she truly cares about advocacy and research. We talk a lot about unionization, whistleblowing, culture change, environmental impact, and all of these things that affect us researchers from social point of view. Um, there is a lot that we don't know, and the advocacy is a constant work for researchers to change the system that does not work for them. Um, and we want you to come and talk to us about what you have been working towards and how can we support you in the advocacy work that you are doing. But to recap, we talked about uh, comments. This is, we started by mentioning the comments in digital common, knowledge common, and then I introduced the Turing way to um, provide a resource which is being built open access uh, by open community. We, are, we also talked about hidden labor, collaborative process, and community practices that we are acknowledging and working in the Turing way to recognize. And we are 
constantly building open science skills ourselves with the global community. We're constantly redefining what open science means. So all I'm saying is a work in progress. It is not a set of rules. So I want to urge you to identify what openness means to you. How do you define open access? Does your open access is all about publication? Or does your open access also involve all the way that you already work? If one message you would like to take away from this talk, it should be to recognize open science as a way to transform the way we conduct our research. In an era where we are facing an unprecedented number of global challenges, ranging from pandemic, climate change, natural disaster, and wars, we need to acknowledge open practices as our duty as researchers and members of society to share knowledge that we have that is useful for someone else. Many facets of open science should not be taken as restriction or distraction, but as a scientific freedom. You can choose from these practices. You can learn and learn, challenge, dismantle, and rebuild research infrastructure that prioritizes reproducible, ethical, collaborative, and accessible research for collective benefit. Through radical imagination, let open science be your superpower. And with that, I'd like to thank Kirsty, uh, who started this project, my team member, Anne and Alex, and all the people who I have a pleasure and uh, privilege to work with in the Turing Way and the Turing Institute. All these resources are openly available. I'm really happy to be contacted anytime. Thank you so much for listening and thank you again for your patience.